Hey, hey, hello everyone and welcome to The Short Answer. It is always a joy and a delight to be with you and um, this is no exception. So welcome to The Short Answer where we drive one little point mm, home. Maybe it's more than one little point at times, but you get the gist of it. All right, so before we get started, I wanna make just a couple of announcements because I forget once we dive in and I'm just having a little bit too much fun to remember to take care of housekeeping. So we always wanna bring you up to speed with what's happening with Mortar Institute and what we're doing next. We have an amazing weekend in store. We are um, moving into a best review tomorrow and then spiritual best teaching practitioners all over the world to be able to um, master working with bioenergetics and uh, helping people heal on every level of their lives. So what a delight and joy that is going to be. It's uh, blending my father's work and my work um, together in a fusion of an amazing body of energy medicine that is uh, a real gift. So I just had to throw that in there. It's not even on my list here. I just had to share it with you. All right. So we're also offering a life mastery through meditation course. Um, coming right up it is uh the dates aren't on here so sorry to tell you but it is go oh so there are going to be two live calls on december 7th and december 14th and in addition to that you're also getting a um an entire video course on learning how to meditate and learning how to operate inside of your own consciousness in a way that allows for the universal intelligence to rise up through the system and uh, ignite your mind in a different way so um, so looking forward to that one. The global solstice. I do want to tell you about this. So December 21st in the morning, we're going to celebrate the winter solstice with 108 sun salutations together. Come on, you can do it. I know you can do it. So uh, we're going to take our time. We're going to, you know, do 10 and pa pause and, and it's, it's, you know, it's doable. And bring a chair just in case. I'm going to give you a chair version of uh, sun salutation that will serve you beautifully as well. So it's all about activating the the stairway to um the stairway to heaven how about that so we are activating our ability to enliven the third eye and begin to perceive uh to greater and greater degrees all the time our multi-dimensionality and be empowered in this life so um then in the evening on this solstice celebration we will be doing a beautiful evening of celebration of light and we'll be doing a transmission a healing meditation as well and we have a special gift this year of involving all of our remote healers and our spiritual best practitioners to come together and help create the um, magnification, the amplification of the healing transmission. So that along with the powers that be in the universe uh, and the stars aligning as they do for the solstice, uh, it proves to be a pretty amazing night. So please tell your friends, it's all complimentary and in service to humanity. So bring your folks along and, uh, and let's have a an amazing celebration of life okay so uh, we also have the body awake yoga membership I want to remind you of that is um, two new classes twice monthly sometimes three or four classes depending on how we can record them getting shorter classes and longer classes all of it designed to help you anchor the consciousness in the core of the body in such a way that you are using the body as the filtering mechanism that it's supposed to be and by doing so you you are able to translate the universal mind into the mind that you utilize when it comes to making decisions and calling upon your creativity and, and finding uh, generously creative solutions to the circumstances in your lives. So, so join me for uh, every way that you can to build the circuitry to awaken to the true self. All right. Well, last but not least, monthly healing transmission. I mentioned a healing transmission. We also, of course, every month have that. Our next one is Wednesday, November 24th. So it proves to be just a beautiful um, entry into the holy days, which is a most profound time of the year where truly the constellations are aligning in such a way that the light falls upon the planet in a manner that activates the rising of the true self. And uh, there's a reason that every indigenous culture celebrates this time of year uh, at this time and that they utilize the foundation of that celebration to be light in the form of fire and candles and lights, etc. So um, we are moving right into that now, you know, and it is just uh, an incredibly inspired time. So 
Join us in every way that you can and stay plugged in so that you too can stabilize the wobble and allow an opening of your true creative nature. And uh, a byproduct of that is that we heal physically and mentally and emotionally and, and uh, our spirituality begins to come alive through the surface of our bodies. Okay, so um, monthlyhealingtransmission.com, monthlyhealingtransmission.com. OK, um, you can join us for that if you've not been being a part of those um, monthly gatherings. So so welcome to the short answer. And it is my great joy to be here with you for the next 15, 20 minutes or so and uh, and share with you that your dream is your sign. Not that you have a dream and you're waiting for a sign that it's a valid dream or that it's going to be a possible dream. Uh, and all of the ways that we look to the signs, we look for signs to tell us, am I dreaming the right thing or am I off track? Is this really dream, this dream that I have that I think I want, is it really what I want? I need a sign. And how many of you have said that, right? Um, more than once. Mm, okay, the hands go up. I know it. And it is because we are living as the personality that we go there. It's because we're living as the personality that we need a sign from the outer world. Now, there's nothing wrong with looking for signs. Just don't base your, <clears throat> your determination or your validation of the qualification of your dream uh, to be made. Don't wait for the outer world to show you that your dream is valid. Do not wait. Do not wait. Now, I'm just I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just inviting you. I want to invite you. Maybe you don't wait so long. Maybe you allow the dream that is rising in you to be the sign as it materializes and manifests into form enough that you could have a thought or an image and perception of a dream that that when that is allowed to rise in your system, the fact that you have a dream that is yours, not you're borrowing one from the neighbors and you're not trying to keep up with the Joneses and you're not trying to do what you should be doing by the time you're 40 or by the time you're 50 or by the time you're 60 or by the time you're 70. Surely you should have this down by the time you're 80. If you're not doing that to yourself, then you are truly allowing a um, you're truly allowing a truth to rise. And if you happen to be arriving at a dream that's coming up through you, if you are coming up into awareness uh, with a dream, believe me, the things that have had to take place for that dream to even rise to your awareness, the dream itself is a sign that you are doing something magnificently right. That magnificently right thing that you're doing is getting out of the way with your mind. You're training the mind to surrender to something bigger than itself. So it's not that you have to surrender to something bigger than yourself. Only if you're attached to and identified as the mind, do you have to surrender to a greater self or a greater purpose or a greater being or presence. If you are residing as the soulful self, your mind has to surrender to you. So if you are identified as the mind, the only thing that you will be surrendering to is you're surrendering the protective personality and that role of the mind to allow the mind to serve the soul. Because the soul is an extension of spirit, which is an extension of the divine, of God, of source. All right. So source becomes this funnel, becomes this channel as spirit descends to the earth and it hits the earth and rises up again. And as it rises, it rises as the soulful self. That's the real you. <clears throat> However, what happens is all that ma magnificent stuff is happening. The, the, this, this divine compresses itself into a funnel, compresses itself into a channel. It descends to the earth and it kind of splats. That's kind of how it's been going so far. All right. So, so then the course of our lives is to pull ourselves back together from that splat and allow enough power and momentum and robust presence to be cultivated that we start to rise up regardless of the veils that we have put in place and the things that we have shoved down and the layers and the cloaks that we've put in the way, we surrender the tendency to do that. And what rises is the essential self coming up and making its way up through all that junk that we've put in place over the course of our lives because we were believing in our dispersal. 
we set an idea of who we are based upon a dispersal, based upon a splat. So in my splat, I felt like I was not enough. I felt like I was, I didn't belong. I felt like I had no voice, like I had no power. Like I, if I were to speak my truth, I wouldn't be accepted. I wouldn't, I wouldn't engage in, in a, in an unconditional life experience. That was my world growing up. That was it. Now, it doesn't mean that my mother didn't love me unconditionally. It doesn't mean that the love wasn't there. It was just that it wasn't able to be expressed in a way that matched what I was feeling. I couldn't find it, and so I retreated. And I'm guessing that at least half of you did the same thing. I probably would guess it's about four-fifths of you did the same thing. The other thing that we do is we, instead of retreating, we just become super performers. We become super achievers. We become maybe even bully-like in order to make our way and make it happen. And I certainly have some, some friends that are operating that way. And so it doesn't mean that they're bad people. It's just that there are ways of doing things. And it doesn't mean that someone who retreated is a weak person. It just is a certain way of engaging in the world all of which needs to find a balance and it will find the balance as we start to peel off of those patterns of behavior and drop into the soulful self, drop into the truth of who we are. And so as we begin to learn to do that inside of the energy codes and all of the schools inside of Mortar Institute, we begin to have this pathway starting to carve and develop. And as this pathway between this deep core wisdom and this mind that can assign meaning or can perceive the meaning and can take action and can make choices about how to deliver that out into the world, now they're starting to talk to each other as we start to build that super highway. You learn how to do this inside of the Energy Codes coursework. You learn how to do it little by little in everything that I do. But if you really want the crash course to jump in there and get this down, then you take the energy codes level one and two and three and four and 4.5, etc. Okay. But I'm always teaching it and always including it in everything that I do because it's what matters most. So let's say that you have a dream. You have a desire that is rising in you and you're aware of it. Or maybe you're not even aware of what it is, but you feel like something juicy, something, something's here. You can feel something vibrating. I'm going to assure you that this time of the year is a perfect time for you to honor that, and to trust it, and to allow it to continue to rise and spend time with the feeling, even if you don't know what it is in terms of words or symbols or images. If it's just a sensation, spend time on the sensation so that you can allow it to become more robust by gathering more and more and more of your attention upon it. Let, let it grow. Let it grow by breathing into it in a loving sort of way, as if you were raising a child. What kind of tenderness would you, would you tend to it with? What kind of intimacy would you allow to be present as you were tending to it? What kind of consistency would you be tending to it if it were a newborn in your life? Pretty much consistent, right? So this is the way to manage ourselves with these dreams, these sensations that are rising. Now, as we're living as the essential self and learning to live as the essential self, we're just busy nurturing this. We're busy believing in it and dreaming its dream. We're seeing that baby grow up and go to college and get the, you know, the life happening and the, the beautiful, um, you know, partnership if that's what they want or children if that's what they want or a career if that you dream for your children. So dream for your dream. Dream for your dream. See all of the ways that it can manifest. See all of the ways that it can make a difference in the world. See all of the ways that it can reach fulfillment and a sensation of the embodiment of the divine because that's what you would want for your child. That is what you want for your dream. Now, if you're allowing your dreams to rise from inside of you, even if it doesn't match the dream that your parents wanted for you or if it doesn't match the dream that you thought you would be dreaming for yourself earlier in life, even if it doesn't match what your neighbors are doing or your friends, friends are doing. If it's yours, it's golden. And if that dream has the opportunity to even rise to your awareness, it's a sign. That's your sign. The fact that it even rises to your awareness and gets your attention enough, it's a sign that you've already been surrendering. You've already been surrendering this limiting belief um, focused and enmeshed mental body that is, it has developed a personality that is steeped 
in beliefs of I'm not enough or I'm too much or I'm this or I'm that or it's no fair or it's life is hard or it has to be a struggle. I have to earn it. All of that. Seriously, you guys. If, if your dream manages to make it all the way to your awareness and it's your dream and it's not some dream that was bestowed upon you or what you think you should be dreaming, if it's really yours, it's miraculous. It's a sign that you've been surrendering. You've been coming back onto the self, onto subject. You've been tending to what matters most. And these dreams or these impressions or these ideas or these visions or goals, whatever it might, whatever form it might feel that it's arriving as, it's a sign that you've been tending to what matters most. Because in the middle of a splat, dreams are pretty hard to find. In the middle of a splat, I didn't even give myself permission to dream. I didn't even know I wasn't dreaming. I didn't even know that dreaming was an integral part of life. I had no way of thinking about it that way. I was just doing what you do. I was showing up like a good soldier and becoming a good student and becoming a good doctor and becoming a good citizen and becoming a good daughter and a sister and a friend and a, and a lover. All of it I was doing it right. It had nothing to do with my dreams. So when people, when, when a person in particular, Aaron, who I've told this story about, asked me, what would your life be like if you could have it any way you wanted and you didn't have to figure out how to make it so, what would it be? And, you know, tears started to come down my eyes because he was asking me about something that was just so foreign to me and I didn't have an answer for him. And, and it was the first time I didn't have an answer because my life was so, you know, entrenched in the regimen of what you do and you just, I learned it. And so there I was. And he said something magical to me in that moment that I've shared with you before. He said, uh, when I said, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. He said, well, what would you say if you did know? And I was like, oh, well, if I did know, I would tell you that I'd be teaching, I'd be teaching meditation and wellness retreats at beautiful beachfront destinations all around the world. And he said, write that down. And I said, you know, right, I can't do that. I got a clinic. I got responsibilities. I got a staff. I got other doctors working for me. Said, it's not going to happen. He said, write it down. So I pulled out my drawer and wrote it down in a notebook, closed it and put it back away when we finished our conversation. And a few years later, a couple of years later, I was cleaning out my desk because we were moving our offices and I found it. And, you know, most of you know, many of you know this story. I opened the book to the same page that I wrote that on and I, it just took my breath away. And I sat down in the chair and I, I realized, oh my God, you know, this is amazing. Um, because in two days I was leaving for my, my first be beautiful beachfront destination meditation and wellness retreat in, in Cancun, Mexico. It was happening. And so if something, what happened in that moment was when he said, well, what would you say if you did know? It took my thinking logical mind and set it aside and it allowed my creativity to just play. And so in that moment, I just out of my mouth came, blah, blah, blah. But it could only come out as soon as my analytical, you know, predicting regimented mind stepped aside. So the fact that it rose to my awareness was a sign that I was doing the right thing. That was allowing my destiny to become known by my mind. It was, it was allowing it to emerge. So rather than having this dream. Don't skip over the fact that the fact that you have the dream is the sign that you're looking for. You're doing what it takes. If that dream is actually your dream, you are doing exactly what it takes for that dream to manifest. Since then, I've been operating that way. What would I do if I did know what I was doing? What would I do if I did, if people did want to hear what I had to say? And I want to just add this last little thing. The more I have shared the raw truth of my life and the processes that I went through and the surrenderings that I did and the vulnerability that exists in the middle of all of it. And that I embrace that vulnerability and I love it. I love that feeling of vulnerability now because I know that right on the other side of vulnerability is the manifestation of what's dreaming me now of what's dreaming my life awake. That's what's going on. So we have it a little backwards. It's exactly the same as when, if your feelings get hurt, instead of just being able to say, oh, that hurt. If you get defensive and, you know, behind the scenes, basically saying even almost unconsciously, you know, I'll show you, I'm going to hurt you back or I'm going to hurt you first. or I'm going to get out of here so you don't get to hurt me anymore. All that kind of stuff is bogus and a waste of your life. 
Instead of skipping over what's real and creating some reactive set of synapses and circuits that, that get you nowhere except more pain, let's come back onto the very first truth. And that first truth was something happened that hurt. And to just live straight into that. Doing that changes your life. The same I am saying about your dreams. Don't skip over the fact that it's a miracle that you're aware of an impression or an intuition or a dream for yourself or a desire or even aware if you don't know what to call it, you're aware of a sensation in there that wants, wants a voice. It, let me out of here. It's doing that. That's your sign that you're doing the right things that are going to allow the divine to pour right through you and allow you to manifest here as your whole self, not just your splatted personality struggling to make it happen in this life. It's not supposed to be that hard. Let's not let it be. Okay. So your dream is your sign. Don't have a dream and wait for a sign to see if your dream is valid. Your dream, of course, is valid. It's you. It's rising up to awareness and it's being manifested just by coming into imagery or sensation in your body. That's your sign that you're living right, that you're allowing everything that needs to take place in order for you to reach the fulfillment of your destiny. You're allowing it to happen. Your dream is your sign. Don't wait for a sign that your dream is valid. There's no question that your dream is valid or it'd be somebody else's dream and you'd be dreaming something else. So trust what is, trust yourselves. Oh, you're made of the universe. There's nothing missing, nothing broken, and absolutely nothing wrong. So let's live the dream awake, you guys, all right? What a beautiful community and what a wonderful opportunity to share. If you're interested in coming and joining in a deeper conversation, um, come join us in the masterclass. So in the comments area, you'll find a link. Click on the link. You can join us for the masterclass, which is starting at the bottom of the hour in about mm, six minutes or so, it looks like. And as such, you will be able to um, partake in a beautiful conversation that weaves all kinds of questions together into one answer, a picture of reality that serves the soul so beautifully. So join us for some soul time in just a few moments in the masterclass. Until then, blessings to you all. Thank you for being a part of this community. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing to feel the essence of so many people from around the world connecting and collecting our hearts and our minds together that we might live as a soulful presence for the earth and for the whole of humanity. Uh, your efforts are noted. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the masterclass in just a few moments. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.